Hey everyone, we are here with Bradley Parker, the director of The Devil Below, that comes out today on VOD and digital. So, hi, Brad. Brad yeah. or Bradley, what do you go for? Either, either. Um, you can call me Brad. If you're angry at me, you can call me Bradley, like my mother. <laughs> well, yeah, this kind of be like Norm Norman. I, I kind of don't care, but when my full name is used, yeah, you know, you know, yeah. it's on. Uh, okay, so how did The Devil Below come to be? Um, well, the Hal of His Brothers, a producing team, kind of brought the script to me, and uh, yeah, when I read it, I got really excited. You know, um, first of all, this is unabashedly a monster movie, right? And it was a dream of mine to do one of those. Um, so that was great. Tick that box. Um, the other thing is I'm a big fan of adventure horror, you know, movies like The Descent. Um, and, you know, my previous movie is a little bit of an adventure horror as well. And, um, you know, the idea of going to these uh, incredibly uh, remote and exciting places um, really thrilled me. But I'd say the most important element is just the, the, the story and the characters in this particular film I found really interesting because they all defy expectations. Um, you meet the locals and you might think uh, uh, this is going to go in a certain direction and it doesn't, it goes in another direction. That's the same thing with the characters themselves. A lot of them behave in ways that are, uh, you know, um, a little bit defying what you might immediately expect to see in a horror film. I love the idea of setting it up and having people say, oh, okay, I know this guy's gonna die for it. That's gonna happen, you know, that's, this is gonna happen, that's gonna happen. In some cases, people might be right, but I hope, um, you know, in this film, we've kind of uh, twisted that a little bit. Mm. I, I did like the, the twist on the locals in that uh, initially they seemed very deliverance, very like, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. keeping outsiders out, but it was actually for everyone's own good, so. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Uh, now, what, what's funny to me is with this one and the last uh, film you made, Chernobyl Diaries, you, you really love to tell these stories about people venturing into forbidden places. Right. What, what is it that draws you to that type of story? Well, I mean, truth be told, I used to do this when I was a kid. Um, you know, it's funny when I hear people say, uh, oh, I'd never do that, it's so stupid. Um, yeah, it is, it is stupid, it is dumb. Um, but you know what, I used to do this with my friends. Like we, we grew up in rural New Jersey and um, you know, there were a lot of local legends. There are abandoned places in the woods. Um, there are places in you know, neighboring states, Pennsylvania and New York. Um, Centralia comes to mind, um, which is a town in Pennsylvania that's yeah. still closed down. Um, it, ha it literally has um, smoldering underground uh, coal fires. Um, and the place is dangerous. There's smoke coming up through the road, like in the middle of the woods, like little pockets of, you know, uh, smoldering fire and things. And these are incredibly exciting and evocative things, you know, these forbidden places that are really scary. And there's so many of them scattered around the world. Um, it's kind of fun to explore them, see new things. And also, I think cinematically, to take people to some place they haven't been to before. Mm. Yeah, it's so funny. That was the first thing that came to mind when uh, the, you know, the whole setup for the movie started to play out. I was like, oh, this is like that town in Pennsylvania, Centralia. Did you have, side note, have you ever been there or did you go check that out? I've been to the outskirts of it. It didn't actually go deep into it. Okay. Um, just like I, I didn't actually go to Pripyat, um, you know, or Chernobyl, but yeah, we went yeah. to places that were very similar. Um, but yeah, I mean, certainly did a lot of research and been to places like it. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, there's there's it's it's uh, uh, it's like kind of the lure of the unknown and, and discovering the what you shouldn't be discovering. And exactly. Uh, th that's so much fun. Uh, now, let's see here. OK, so how, how did you guys develop the look of the creatures? Yeah, I mean, this was exciting. Um, it's such a fun project to develop a creature. Yeah. It's kind of like a dream project for me. I mean, part of what they're about comes from the place. Part of it comes from what they represent. Um, and part of it is just, you know, um, what they would have to do plausibly to survive in their situation. So we pulled, on, pulled from elements like, you know, their skin, for example, um, they're hairless, they're pale, they're very much like moles, right? Um, their uh, sort of exoskeleton skull uh, is similar to a snail shell, you know, and uh, um, their teeth are these like, you know, plausible kind of, uh, 
in some ways, um, maybe not probable, but you know, uh, plausible, um, you know, a kind of underground critter kind of teeth, you know, it's a mouth that would make a lot of sense when you're kind of burrowing through, um, you know, under, under the ground. So we thought about it a lot, pulled those elements together, um, and then thought about, you know, their modes of locomotion and what they would do, what they, how they would behave. Now, it may not be incredibly obvious the first time you watch the film, but there are different behaviors and there are subtleties in the way that the creatures are designed. Some are meant to be scouts that go topside. Some are meant to be sort of soldiers. Yeah. And then there's another creature that has a completely different purpose um, that I won't spoil for anybody. But um, yeah, yeah, we thought about it a lot. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, you can definitely tell uh, those, those types of notes were uh, thought out. And like, in hindsight, I'm like, yeah, of course, you know. Uh, so really nice work there. Now you actually got started, well, you're still working in visual effects. That's right, yes. Um, and very successfully. Uh, so tell me something, what, like what draws you from visual effects into directing? Uh, storytelling, you know, it's, uh, it's something that I've always loved. Um, you know, I, I grew up with a grandfather who was a sailor and he told all these incredible stories and I was just fascinated listening to him and then watching movies when I was a kid and falling in love with them and um, not just the craft and how they were put together but the characters and how they made me feel. And I think the idea of creating art, creating a movie that can actually um, elicit a response from an audience is really exciting uh, to me. So. Um, the other thing is, as a visual effects supervisor, um, you have sort of an all access pass, right? This is like one of the secrets of VFX is that um, you get to see behind the curtain in, in every department um, for the entirety of the film from, you know, uh, the moment the script is in, uh, approved to the very final color correction of the movie before it's released. And that becomes a bit of a film school, right? Because you work with a lot of different filmmakers, you get to uh, interact with the, the actors and all the different department heads, and you start to pull together ideas. Like if I was gonna do this, um, granted with limited resources, um, who would I work with and then how would I do it? What, can I, what lessons can I take from working with this filmmaker or that filmmaker? And you start to put together a picture of you know, the kind of stories that you might want to tell and how you might do it so yeah it's it's a it's a lot of fun in that regard awesome so uh any advice that you would give to other filmmakers who are are honestly trying to tell their own stories who are in other departments like vfx or mm -hmm. visual development or anything like that any advice yeah i mean i'd say um first of all do it do it in any capacity you can even if it's just shooting going out and shooting with a gopro um if you don't have the resources to make uh, an entire film, make a short film, make a, make a test scene, you know, get others excited, um, find your own people. Um, you know, if you're working in the movie business or advertising or anything like that, um, you'll start to meet other friends, other people that are like-minded and, you know, may just want to come on board a little bit of, of, of a, a camping trip with you, you know, to make this, little project to help realize it. I mean, I've certainly found that in my career that um, people have been incredibly generous in wanting to help one another um, do things, explore things creatively. Um, there's, there's always, you know, if you've got the time in between projects, why not help a friend make their movie? You know, mm -hmm. it's, um, so I'd say, don't be, don't be shy. Don't be uh, afraid to talk to your, the people that you've, um, uh, that you've met and also ask questions and try to learn, um, you know, uh, absorb as much as you can. Any experience you've got on a film set is an opportunity to learn what other people are doing on a film set. Um, and uh, all of that knowledge is going to help you when, you know, the sun is coming up and you've got to get a shot done and, you know, the, uh, the crane is broken and uh, <laughs> your B camera is down. You're going to pull on all that knowledge, everything that you've done, and you know it could be from art. You could have worked in art department or VFX or whatever. You're going to say, "I've seen a little bit of this situation before, and I know what works and what doesn't." And all of that is super helpful. Definitely, uh, um, amazing advice. Uh, so, listen, um, I'm going to let you go, but uh, uh, thank you again for taking the time. Uh, oh sure. Uh, for talking to us about it, the movie is actually I really enjoyed it. 
It looks great. That was another thing I needed to tell you that the look of the film is very cool. Oh, great. Yeah, Morgan nice. Susser um, did, a, did a bang up job on that film. Yeah, yeah, really good work. Uh, okay, well, thank you so much and best of luck with your release. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, again, Brad Parker uh, and uh, The Devil Below comes out today on VOD and digital. Thank you so much, Bradley. All right, thank you. Bye. Okay, bye.